Hello everyone, it's my first race back after holidays, so I'm going to have to apologise for being a little bit rusty in this one. Yes, I made some bad choices in the first couple of laps, but I did get better as the race went on, which resulted in a very dramatic final lap. Now it's the LMP2s at Spa in Le Mans Ultimate, and I'm starting from P4 on the grid. Have I got a podium in me? Let's get down to action. Green flag, let's go. Here we go then, we're underway. P4 and I'm only two tenths slower than Andreas Draliwak in P2, so I am in real contention here. Cars on my inside though, I get a little tap and an even bigger one, it almost sends me 90 degrees to the right. Somehow I managed to hold on to it and stay facing in the right direction, but that was a scary moment. The race almost undone at turn one. And I have lost a position from it too. Joe Fractal crept through up into P4, dropping me down into P5. But at the moment, I'm just grateful to still be out on track. Had my rear have spun around there, I'd have been rejoining at the back of the pack, no doubt about it that. However, if I am going to challenge for this podium, I do need to get back past Fractal as quickly as possible. Early mistake just in front of him too. Andreas Draliwak not getting it stopped at the end of the Kemmel straight. That has allowed the leading two to make a break for it. Headlight flashing in the rearview mirror now. That's Valentin Kine. He's going to launch a move up the inside to forcefully take P5 and demote me another position. So I'm down to P6 now. And yeah, maybe showing some signs that I am just a little bit rusty. This is my first race in nearly three weeks. I really should have been a bit more switched on there. It was clear that Kine had more pace than me and he alerted me to it as well. He was flashing his headlights all the way down the back straight. I really should have defended into the hairpin, but I didn't do and it's cost me another position. And I haven't got the foggiest idea where Kine has found this race pace from either. He started all the way down in P13 on the grid. His qualifying lap time was nearly one and a half seconds slower than mine. Well, one thing's for sure, he's certainly not one and a half seconds and slower now he has already picked up eight positions on this opening lap well but there's a mistake from him exiting this fast right hander out onto the gravel this is an opportunity which side do i go i guess right oh i'm gonna get squeezed out onto the grass maybe guessing to go right wasn't the right option however i've managed to keep it on track managed to maintain enough speed to snatch that fifth position back but kine won't lie down he is surely gonna come back swinging with another move up the inside into the final chicane now i'm gonna try and be firm here i don't want to be bullied out of this position for a second time and i do hold him off however was i a bit too aggressive there i may have squeezed him out on the inside a little too much there well, now i'm going defensive to try and discourage him from making a move up the inside which doesn't work he tries it anyway he was never gonna get that stop though kine out into the gravel and for now I've got a bit of breathing room. Right, let's go back and check out a replay of the start to see just how close I came to getting turned around. We're watching Joe Fractal starting just behind me in P5, trying an audacious move up the inside, locks up the brakes, almost hits the pole sitter, Alex Wood. Wood gets away with it and so do I when Mike Menth clips my rear end. Right, here's a replay of the first overtake. Kine forcing his way up the inside. Now I can't blame him going for that gap. I left a gaping hole on the inside. However, later in the lap he makes a big mistake. And this is the point where I've got to gamble on which way he's going. I choose to go right. Unfortunately, it's the same way that Kine goes. I clip the grass. I send advertising warning flying. But somehow I still make the pass. End of the lap then. This is where I think I squeezed him just a little too aggressively. Yeah, he's fully alongside me there going into the final chicane. I really should have left him a bit more space there. Did you see in the background two other cars crashing out spectacularly? But we're sticking with this battle because Kine is going to have one final swing into the source hole. Oh, he came so close to T-boning Joe Fractal there. Right, back on track towards the end of lap two. I'm in P5. I'm one second behind Fractal in fourth, and I'm one second clear of Kine in sixth. Now, can I close in on Fractal and retake that fourth position I started from? There's a car parked up on the infield, but that's a bat marker. And just as I get a sniff of Fractal, I get on the gas just a little bit too early and lose the rear. A disastrous mistake at the end of lap two. I'm going to rejoin down in 10th position. Well, before we see a replay of that mistake, let's find out why there was a bat marker parked up at the end of lap two. We've got to go back to the start of the race. Pierre Frio in the red car getting absolutely drilled at the end of the Kemmel straight. Uh, Frio tried to limp back to the pits with heavy damage, but eventually he gave up and parked up at the chicane at the end of the second lap. Yeah, there's my mistake. What a careless error. 
Lap four then, we're approaching halfway distance and so far I've not been able to regain any positions. I'm still in 10th position, still tucked in behind Michael Zeeman. However, all is certainly not lost here. We've still got 12 minutes on the clock and actually sixth position is within sight ahead. It's Kirill Wisniak, the driver in six. He's only two seconds ahead of me at the moment and he's under real pressure from Mike Menth in seventh. Just behind him, Fabrice Dev in eighth and then Zeeman in ninth. And it looks like there's been a coming together between Wisniak and Menth, and it's Menth who's come off worst. Menth in the gravel, and there's my first freebie. But let's stick with this because there may be another one shortly. Look how ferociously they're battling ahead. Deb making a move up the inside of Wisniak. They're trading a bit of paint as they come out of that fast right hand. The Wisniak moves across to the right. There's contact with Zeeman, and the pair of them are in the barrier. Well, in the space of a couple of corners, I have been gifted three positions. I've climbed from 10th up into seventh let's check out the replay and menth is going to try and move up the inside of visniak but there's no room at all menth is going to get pinched here or talk about being squeezed visniak himself was on the grass so visniak no doubt rattled by that contact which leaves fabrice deb with the perfect opportunity to try and capitalize these two are side by side now neither driver wanting to surrender ultimately visniak has to but then he tries moving over to the right not knowing that michael zeeman is already there the pair of them into the back I'm promoted up into seventh. And that is where I stayed for the next few laps. I always had Fabrice Dev within my sights, always within one second. However, we were almost identical on pace, which made it incredibly difficult to get close enough to consider a move. This, at the end of lap seven, is about as close as I got. However, Deb wisely is going to defend into turn one. I'm going to keep out wide just in case he does what Kine did earlier and throws it in too deep. He's not going to, though. He's driving a flawless race. No mistakes from Deb in front. From. Later on in lap eight, I'm still breathing down his neck, but Deb won't crack. He is coping with this pressure incredibly well. I do appear to be a little bit better on the brakes than him. Faster entries into corners, but he is getting on the gas just a little bit quicker than I can and bursting out of those corners a bit faster. Crucially, he's quicker than me through Eau Rouge and Ramlon, which gives him the advantage on the Camel Straight. I've not been close enough to use the toe, which is denying me the best opportunity I'm going to get to try and make a pass as a result i'm having to push a little bit harder at other parts of the track including here i get on the gas just a little bit too early that sucks me out onto the grass and costs me some valuable valuable tenths right jumping forward to later in lap nine we've just had the alert from the race stewards that there is one minute left on the clock we will get one more lap here but i just took a bit too much of that outside curb as a result once again deb has opened up a little bit of an advantage there's a car parked up to the left out of fuel that's a back marker and at the moment i'm losing ground i think my best opportunity to get any more positions in this race is if a few of the guys ahead start running out of fuel at the moment right one lap to go what can i do there's a big incident ahead yellow flags are out two cars out into the gravel and it looks like the battle for the podium has turned physical because marius chantelin was the driver in p3 he's still in the gravel the other driver to rejoin just in front is valentine kine now, Kine and Chanteloup were battling for that third position, although Kine has got back onto the track in front of us. The big question is, did he pick up damage? Because it looked like a pretty hefty coming together between those two. And if he is down on power, we should be able to exploit that down the Kemmel straight, or even before, look how down on power he is. Oh, I almost get taken out. We both got caught out by just how slow Kine was through Eau Rouge and Rattle on, and now I'm closer than I've ever been to death. This might be the opportunity I didn't think I was going to Get. Can I get far enough alongside to challenge into Lekuma? Back out of it, but Deb locks up anyway. He's gone wide, and I do get the position. I am up into P4. Incredible stuff. I ended the previous lap down in seventh position. Now I find myself in P4. Let's check out the replay to see how these two came to blows. This was the first strike. That was Kine making a move up the inside into the source. It was very similar to the move he attempted on me earlier in the race. Meanwhile, at Lake Coombe, Chantelon fires back, but he's not going to get that stopped. He runs out to the runoff area, but that's given him a big advantage. He's surely got to give that position back. Well, he doesn't do so. Kine, probably a little bit frustrated by that, gets his elbows out again. These two are getting really physical now. For the second time in a lap, Chantelon has been barged out into the gravel, and I think he's just lost his temper because watch this. 
wham, Chanteloup cuts the corner and absolutely T-bones Kine. Now straight away I asked the question, did Kine pick up damage? Well we soon found out the answer to that, yes he did, he was so slow through Eau Rouge and Radalon. Deb and I both incredibly lucky to get past without too much contact. The bat marker, Ricardo Panabianco behind us wasn't so lucky, oh an even bigger wreck! That is Alexis Souchois who was in 7th position getting caught out by Keen switching lines. You can just see it again in the background there while I make the overtake which gives me P4. Oh, what an incredible end to this race. I'm going to finish it where I started it, in fourth position. But that seemed a long way off a few laps ago when I was down in P10. But I stuck at it. I gained some freebies. And most importantly, I was in the right place at the right time to capitalise. Let's check out the classified results then. And ultimately, I got lucky. I didn't get punished for that mistake at the end of lap two. I was the fourth fastest driver on track. And that is where I have finished. My fastest lap in the race, a 209.3, so a couple of tenths slower than Joe Fractal, who ended up taking that final podium position. All in all, really happy with a P4 on my return to sim racing. And Le Mans Ultimate continues to be a lot of fun. However, it's got to be said, I am seeing a lot of tempers lost in this sim. This isn't the first LMU race video I've made where we've seen frustrations boil over and retaliation strikes launched. So hopefully these drivers will just calm down a little bit because as we've seen in my other videos and again today, if you lose your temper in sim racing, it very rarely ends well. Thank you ever so much for watching.